Hello everyone, I'm Agnès Tempé, Product Manager at Horiba Scientific. I'm very pleased to be with Emmanuel Nolo and Yann Mazel from the CELAT in Grenoble to talk to you about a new depth profiling technique. This new technique is added on to the already large portfolio of Horiba Scientific Instruments for material characterization. Innovation keeps driving the core Jobin Yvon technology of our instrument. Horiba Scientific is the first and only provider of tip enhanced Raman spectroscopy or terse proven systems capable of measuring nano objects made of the trendy 2D material, including graphene. But today we are going to present you an innovative depth profiling technique called Plasma Profiling Time of Light Mass Spectrometry or PPTOF MS. PPTOF MS provides the elemental composition as a function of depth. This type of information is crucial for deploying new material as it is linked to the physical property of material and thereby to the performance of devices. PPTOF MS is a sputtering based depth profiling technique. Sputtering is ensured by a glow discharge plasma of ultra pure argon. The plasma is generated between the sample surface and, uh, and the cylindrical anode, usually made of copper. This anode is at ground, while the sample is supplied by a pulse radio frequency potential from its back. Argon are, cr are created in the plasma and bombard the sample surface. The spotter species are excited or ionized. Ions are then detected with an orthogonal time of flight mass spectrometer. The pulse RF excitation allows to do analysis of conductive, non-conductive materials as well as semiconductors. The sample is actually used to close the plasma chamber and therefore doesn't need to be transferred into a UHV chamber. The diameter of the cylindrical anode defines the probing area. 4 mm anodes are typically used, leading to 4 mm diameter craters. Such plasma works at a few millibar, and the energy of the ions in the plasma is about 50 electron volt. The low energy minimizes the surface damage, and high current ensure high spotting rates, as high as few tenths of nanometer per second. This animation nicely illustrates the perfect match between the fast erosion plasma and the ultra-fast orthogonal time-of-flight mass spectrometer for looking at multi-layer solid samples. The time-of-flight mass spectrometer is capable of producing a complete mass spectrum covering the entire periodic table every 30 microseconds and thus providing information about any element of interest at any depth. Let me show you now some typical data. Here is a depth profile of an anodized aluminum sample. The oxide layer is 360 nanometer thick. Raw signal are namely signal as a function of time does in this case have been converted to concentration versus depth upon depth calibration. This shows that one can see the presence of a chromium marker over a 2 nanometer depth. It is enrichment in chromium in the oxide layer. Boron and phosphorus are also seen as marker and tracer. Please note that the analysis of this sample took less than one minute and a half. The second example is an application from photovoltaics. We are collaborating with the University of Uppsala and Midsummer AB in Sweden. Copper indium gallium selenide or CIGFs absorber layers of a couple of micron thickness have been analyzed with pipit of MS. These layers are in the structure of solar cells fabricated on stainless steel substrate. The copper, indium, gallium and selenium depth profile have been measured and the resulting gallium 
to gallium plus indium ratio is used to calculate the absorber band gap depth result profile to be input in simulation to predict solar cell performance. In this case, PPT of MS has been a very useful fast response tool as it is capable to measure quickly, accurately, quite thick layers. Like in glow discharge mass spectrometry technique used for measuring traces in bulk material, semi-quantitative analysis can be achieved without calibration for PPT of MS. This internal calibration method is based on the assumption that the ratio of an isotope ion current over the total ion current, excluding the plasma gas current, represents the atomic concentration of these isotopes. It is called the ion beam ratio method. The ion beam ratio, or IBR, will give atomic percentage at an accuracy of a factor of two or three. This rule does not apply for electronegative elements like oxygen or nitrogen. To be more accurate, the use of reference sample is necessary. For illustration, I am showing the semi-quantitative depth profile obtained from a sample used as a reference for SIMS analysis. It is a silicon wafer implanted with the isotope 118 of tin. The ion beam ratio is calculated for this half micron profile obtained in only two minutes. Here, the ion beam ratio is the ratio between the signal of TIN118 and the silicon 30 signal divided by 0.04, which is the isotopic abundance of silicon 30. This ratio is then multiplied by the atomic density of silicon. And as seen in the shown depth profile, there is a very good agreement between SIMS data and the PPT of MS data. As you will see in the video, this ratio is available in one click from the PPT of MS software. Let's watch a video showing the analysis of a sample of magnetic multilayers deposited on silicon for magnetic sensors. This has been realized with the instrument located in the clean room of Leti. The sample stage is now open. The piece of silicon wafer in place is being released and removed. Jan is taking the sample and blowing nitrogen to remove any dust particles from the surface. He is positioning the sample face to analyze down in front of the 4 mm anode, pressing the load button primary vacuum is made, which holds the sample in place. Pressing the button a second time lowers the brass applicator on the back of the sample. The applicator brings the pulse radiofrequency excitation and also cools the sample typically to 12 degrees Celsius. Jan has closed the door of the sample stage. After a rough pumping of 20 seconds of the source, the gate valve located just below the first orifice of the source opens. Then Yan is initiating what we call a flush. Argon is flowing in the source for three minutes to remove as much residual gas as possible in the source plasma chamber. Analysis is then started. The depth profile can be seen in real time in the bottom right window, while the top one shows the full mass spectrum, and on the bottom left is the ion response within one RF period. You can see first a tantalum layer, followed by a platinum manganese layer, then an iron cobalt layer, then a second platinum manganese layer, finally a tantalum layer, before reaching the silicon substrate. The depth profile for this stack of 100 nanometer is achieved in 25 seconds. The full analysis, including sample position and flush, is less than five minutes. Once the acquisition is finished, the isotope of the main element are defined as matrix. And in one click, you can get the semi-quantification of all elements in the structure.
In this video, you surely got an idea about how fast the technique is. This converts into a high throughput of over 10 samples per hour. But beyond the speed, you must have also noticed how easy the sample positioning is. And of course, you've seen in real time the acquisition of full, simple mass spectra. There are three benefits from this elemental coverage. It makes detection, identification of unexpected contaminants really easy, an asset for failure analysis. Then it allows retrospective analysis and it provides incredible flexibility in terms of material and application. Finally, you've seen following the acquisition how in a one-click semi-quantitative analysis can be obtained without any calibration. Mm, let me now pass it on to Emmanuel Nolo, Metrology Manager at CLAT, in which the pipit of MS instrument had been installed in the clean room since January 2016 and used for a wide range of applications. Hello, my name is Emmanuel Nolo and I am a metrology manager at CLAT. CLAT is a French research and technology organization located in Grenoble, France. The mission of CLAT is to create innovation and to transform innovation-ready solutions into investor-ready products and solutions, which covers the value of depth in terms of technology readiness levels. We address a wide range of application domains from bio and medical healthcare to energy, nanoelectronics or Internet of Things. As a research and technology organization, we have efficient connections with many universities to improve our research and invention processes and strong collaboration with major industrial partners. We are operating different research platforms so as to address the specific and common scientific and technological challenges relating to key enabling technologies. The Horiba Plasma Profiling Tool was installed one year ago in our 200-300 mm advanced platform dedicated to CMOS and 3D solutions. The performance of the tool was assessed using samples from both CMOS 3D and 200 mm MEMS platforms. Our solutions are based on a huge variety of innovative thin layered materials deposited on different substrates. The performances of the final products will of course be driven by the chemical, structural, optical and electrical properties of the thin films. On one hand, these properties are investigating using a world-class nanoscale characterization platform. This platform comprises, among others, advanced techniques and tools for the characterization of chemical composition and composition profile, such as X-ray photo emission, nano OG, electron beam techniques like SEM or TEM EDX, and ion beam techniques such as SIMS, TOF SIMS, and atom probe tomography. On the other hand, the properties of substrate thin layered materials on product wafers are also investigated in the clean rooms using inline metrology tools. The inline metrology tool set dedicated to chemical composition and composition profiles includes Anger Reserve XPS, SEM with EDX analysis, and various techniques based on X-ray fluorescence. When we decided to introduce a Horiba plasma profiling tool in the CMO 3D cleanroom, we expected that this new tool would allow for fast, reliable, atline characterization of the profile of major and minor elements in thin layered stacks. We hoped that the tool would deliver results accurate enough to really accelerate process development based on efficient process metrology loops. On top of that, we expected this tool would complement more time-consuming characterization techniques, such as TOF-SIMS, thereby reducing the queue times of SIMS analysis. Thank you, Emmanuel. So, hello everyone, I'm Jan Mazel. I am a metrology engineer at the CLAT, where I work on the PPT of MS. As Agnes mentioned before, we have been using the PPT of MS for a year now, 
and I would like to share with you my experience using the instrument. So during this section, I will present you several analyses that interested us. So in the first part, I will show you samples illustrating the semi-quantification uh, capabilities of the technique. Then I will present results obtained on ultrasound layers. And finally, we will talk about contaminant detection, as it, in our opinion, really is a strength of the technique. So let's start off with semi-quantification. First, I will present you the analysis of a model sample. This is an epitaxially grown silicon silicon germanum super lattice. So it consists in five periods of 10 nanometer thick silicon on 10 nanometer thick silicon germanium plus a 10 nanometer thick silicon capping layer. We call this sample a model because it has abrupt interfaces and well-known composition as well as layer thicknesses. The vertical uh, axis of these depth profiles show the ion beam ratio, which is used for semi-quantification. As Agnes uh, mentioned uh, before, the ion beam ratio is simply the ratio of ion signals, all ions being weighted by their isotopic abundances. Here, the ions of interest are silicon and germanium, so at any time or at any depth in the depth profile, the sum of their uh, ion beam ratio equals 1. This method is really interesting because it doesn't require calibration and can be computed without any user supervision. Due to the low variability of the sputtering and ionization yields over the periodic table in the pipette of MS, IBR gives a fairly accurate measure of the actual composition. So a common statement is that the accuracy, an accuracy of a factor 2 to 3 is achieved with this method, but in fact it's often much better. This is the case here, uh, as the ion beam ratio of germanium in the silicon germanium layers is 28% instead of 31% determined by X-ray diffraction. So this next analysis comes from the sample you have seen in the video. It is made of ferro and antiferromagnetic layers for a total thickness close to 100 millimeters. Uh, this kind of stack is used in micro-electromechanical micro magnetic sensors. So as you can see, the layers are well defined. And if we compare the composition determined by ion beam ratio with reference ion beam analysis techniques such, are, uh, such as Rutherford backscattering, we find a very good agreement. Indeed, in the worst case, which is ion, you can see uh, that estimation, the IBR estimation, is within 10 relative percent of the calibrated measurement. And of course, if you see at the horizontal axis, this, uh, the whole stack was analyzed in only 20 seconds. So now we have seen the calibration-free semi-quantitative capabilities of the instrument. I will show you some results we had analyzing thin and ultrasound films. So this first sample is a layer of germanium antimony tellurium alloy deposited on silicon dioxide. This material is used for phase change memory, a type of non-volatile random access memory foreseen as an alternative to traditional flash technology. So the actual composition being confidential, all the IBR's value have been scaled and shifted. Nevertheless, they were pretty close to the reference composition measurements. So if we look at the depth profile, we can distinguish two zones, the surface, which is heterogeneous, and the bulk, which is homogeneous. Depth resolution at the surface is very good in the order of nanometers. So as we saw this, we wanted to know if it was real or just an artifact, and so we compared the results with TOFSIMS and STEM-EDX. As you can see, the surface elemental distribution are in good agreement, and both techniques achieve similar depth resolution. STEM-EDX analysis confirm the composition profile, and so the, the pipit of MS pro proved to be reliable for both in-depth and surface analysis with nanometer resolution. The last example of ultrasound film analysis is a 6 nanometer nickel platinum layer uh, deposited 
by physical vapor deposition on a silicon substrate. So this material is used for advanced contact and to achieve the desired electrical properties, the layer needs to be annealed. So we had the opportunity to analyze both as deposited and annealed sample, samples. If we look at the depth profile on the as deposited sample, we can see that the composition is not homogeneous. Starting from the surface, we can observe nickel first, then platinum, and finally silicon. Uh, again, the depth resolution is in the order of a few nanometers. Upon annealing, we observe a diffusion of the silicon towards the surface, indicating the formation of a silicide. This surface in a, is now richer in platinum. We also conducted Tov Sims analysis, and both techniques show the same annealing effect and the same depth resolution. So for further information, I invite you to read the uh, article mentioned under the graph. So for the last part of this section, I will show you how useful the pipit of MS can be for detecting contamination. Contamination is always a concern for material performance and identification and Identifying an unknown or unexpected contaminant can be difficult. So before taking a look at real example, uh, let me start by illustrating why the pipit of MS is well suited for this task. So if we go back to our first sample, the silicon silicon germanium super lattice, here uh, you can see the average spec mass spectra obtained with both stuff sims and the pipit of MS. And if we take a closer look at the Tov Sims mass spectrum, we see a lot of peaks, especially after 107. So if you look closely at the peaks, we identify molecular ions such as germanium, germanium oxide, silicon oxide, or germanium silicon compounds. So the ionization mechanisms in Tov Sims leads to the formation of numerous molecular ions. So while this can be useful for organic sample, this is not ideal for unknown element uh, identification. So for a matrix with more than two elements, the molecular content will grow rapidly and peaks overlapping will make identification even more complicated and time consuming. To the contrary, the pipit of MS mass spectrum is much simpler as the ionization mechanism mainly produces monoatomic ions. Spotting an expected element is much, a much simpler task, even a non-expert can do. So let's now have a look at a contaminated sample. So this mass spectra come from a lead zirconium titanium alloy used for MAMS piezoelectric actuators. So while the hafnium isotopes are clearly visible on the pipit of MS mass spectrum, they're not on the top seams. Searching for unknown elements only takes minutes and can be done routinely even if this is not the purpose of the analysis. So the next three slides will show you how the pipit of MS helped us to quickly diagnose a contamination issue and go back to contaminant-free process conditions. So we depth profile layers used for MEMS magnetic sensors. They may there are made of a stack of alternating silicon dioxide and ion cobalt boron alloy layers. So due to a degradation of the magnetic properties of the devices, the deposition team asked us to analyze samples. At first, we were not looking for contamination, but as I showed you before, elements are clearly seen in the mass spectrum, and so we discovered titanium. So we could also tell contamination was occurring during the ion cobalt boron deposition, as the titanium is only detected in these layers. And thanks to the ion beam ratio, we were able to estimate the titanium concentration to be 0.1 atomic percent. So the next question was, uh, where does the titanium come from? So we discussed about this uh, titanium contamination with the deposition team, and they told us a titanium collimator had recently been installed in the deposition tool. 
So I just opened an acquisition made prior to the collimator installation. And as you can see, the signal difference for titanium is striking. So this is a strong piece of evidence. And unlike quadrupole or magnetic sector based mass analyzers, time of flight mass spectrometers record all masses for each sampling point. This proved to be very, very useful for retrospective comparison. So the pipit of MS depth profiles are done very rapidly, 35 seconds in this case. So this created a uh, very good reactivity and great, in great interaction with the deposition team. And this allowed a quick return to non-contaminating deposition conditions while keeping the collimator installed. For the last example of this contaminant tracking focus, uh, I chose uh, indium tin oxide deposited on silicon. So indium tin, indium tin oxide is a transparent conducting oxide widely used for photovoltaics and more generally photonics applications. So following a maintenance operation on the ITO deposition tool, a degradation of the electrical and optical properties of the material was observed. Having heard about the short response time of the pipit of MS, the ITO people send us samples to analyze. So with a 10 second analysis, we could detect the presence of silicon in the material and carbon at the interface of the ITO and the silicon. We also found an expected zirconium at, the, at a concentration in the order of 100 parts per million. So this is a fairly low concentration but mass analysis is very robust for elements with many isotopes, as the natural abundance of these isotopes is supposed to be found. So if we look at the mass spectrum, we can see that all the zirconium isotopes were found in the layer in amount consistent with their natural uh, abundance. So this provides very reliable information of the, on the contamination nature. Topsis analysis were also conducted on these samples a few days later, so let's have a look at them. For an easy comparison, pipit of MS intensities have been rescaled to, rescale to align with Topsim's intensities, and we can see that measurements are consistent with, consistent with both techniques. Silicon exhibits the same distribution in the ITO layer, and carbon is also seen at the interface with the substrate. Tofsim's measurement didn't reveal the presence of zirconium, though. So, while Tofsim's overall sensitivity is superior to that of pipit of MS, different acquisitions are required to achieve the best sensitivity. So, we can also observe that the dynamic range of carbon and oxygen is superior with Tofsim's. This is due to the fact that the pipit of MS only works in primary vacuum condition whereas TOVSIMS analyses are made under UHV. So during this presentation, I have often compared pipit of MS with TOVSIMS, so I think a quick summary of how these techniques compare is interesting. So if we begin with pipit of MS, we can mention that analyses are much faster and that quantification is easier, thanks to the ion beam ratio calculations. Mass spectra are simpler, which is very useful for unexpected element detection and identification. Uh, seen as well are as thick layers can be depth profiled. The instrument is also much simpler to operate and data are easier to process. The sensitivity is uniform on the periodic table and analysis don't require sample transfer in UHV. On the other hand, TOFSIMS is capable of imaging as the analysis gun is rastered. It can achieve better depth resolution. Molecular information is obtained, which can be necessary for polymers or uh, biological samples. The analyzed area is much smaller, so features of only a few microns can be analyzed. And finally, due to its UHV analysis chamber, a lower level of detection can be obtained especially for atmospheric elements such as carbon, nitrogen, or oxygen. So I thank you for your attention. I will be happy to answer your question with Agnes. 
I will now hand over to Emmanuel, who will conclude this presentation. After one year of operation, we at the CLAT are really convinced by the performances of the tool. The tool is easy to operate. It allows for fast semi-quantitative analysis for films on stacks and even for ultra-thin films. The performance of semi-quantitative analysis only based on ion beam ratio was a real good surprise for us and is now extensively used. The ability to reveal surface and buried contamination, sometimes using retrospective analysis, was found to be very useful for process development, monitoring and failure analysis. Again, the fact that ion beam ratios give a good estimate of the contamination level is a key feature. We found that this tool is an efficient bridge between inline metrology and characterization. The tool is very well accepted by metrology, characterization, and process engineers. The positioning in the clean room as close as possible to process allowed effective acceleration of process developments. <laughs>